So now, I showed Ray Kurzweil's version of Moore's Law and a couple other his sort of accelerating curve charts. And if anyone reads one of his books, you'll see page after page after page of these accelerating changes going on in technology. He had an interesting summary takeaway that you can sort of easily remember. And this is true in perpetuity, meaning it'll be true 20 years from now as it is today. That if you look forward 20 years to the future, you'll see as much technology advancement as the past 100. And that's pretty profound. If you think back to like 1909, anyone remember that? I, I don't, right? But in America, right, it, you, if you were born in the early 1900s, you were born at home without electricity, without, and not in a hospital. You probably didn't graduate high school. You know, society has changed dramatically in the last 100 years, largely driven by technology uh, and the vectors along education and social uh, equity. And to think that not as much change, certainly by no means, I mean, human nature is glacial and, and doesn't change. Uh, from year to year, but the drivers of comparable change, think about all the genomics revolutions, think about what's happened in the last 100 years with birth control, and then the next 100 years in genetically modified organisms, it's going to be pretty, um, uh, how should I put it, a tension will arise between human nature and the pace of change. But I think some near-term implications are the forecast horizons are shorter and shorter, you know, predicting next quarter is going to be as difficult as predicting next year, and the idea of a 100-year business plan is as absurd as it ever was, and soon will be the one-year business plan will get more absurd. And that you have perpetual future shock. Everybody used to think, oh, it's that young generation that's using computers or whatever, and that's because the pace of change was going through a sort of generational 20-year gap. Soon it'll be, oh, you, you were the class of 90? Oh, shit. Yeah, everything's changed, right, in, in, in certain scientific disciplines. It certainly feels that way. And that, that idea that the future keeps changing faster than we keep up with it, I think, will only accelerate. And that relates to things like black swan events. A great book by Nicholas Taleb out of uh, Lebanon, I highly recommend it. Um, and he comes at it more from an econometric point of view or an economist point of view that says, the future is increasingly driven by unpredicted events, things that in retrospect made sense, but at the time, no one predicted it. And as a venture firm, we try to take advantage of that, right? We try to invest in things that most people think are crazy ideas. It's kind of an interesting statement. And if we're, we don't strive for consensus when we invest in deals, we will allow a passionate minority to outweigh a blah majority. Right? So a couple people that really want to do a deal can outvote like five that don't. And um, the reason is because no good idea that changes the world is universally regarded as one at its outset. So Google, Hotmail, Skype, oh my gosh, the list goes on, eBay, were generally laughed at by most venture capitalists when they were trying to raise their first round of capital. They were ridiculed. I know they were. Now, you won't get that opinion today. In retrospect, we all changed our story. We're like, oh, yeah, I really tried to get that deal. I almost got that deal. I would have been in that deal. Um, it was brilliant. I was all over it. But at the time, they laughed at it. So you know, the, ones that, the companies that really do change the world, uh, and I would, this maybe is a sort of source of encouragement for the entrepreneurs with an idea. If everyone thinks your idea is good, it's probably not a big idea. If most people think your idea is bad, that's great, as long as you find somebody who thinks it's a good idea. Right? If 100% of people, and you've sampled widely, think it's a bad idea, it probably is a bad idea. I don't know that one for to be sure, but it might be a safe bet. But if you can find you know, like a 1 to 10 ratio, one person likes it, 10 hate it, that's perfect. 